Good afternoon. So I want to talk about ground cover. This is more or less maybe a continuation of why you should mulch, especially summertime. Just ground cover. If you've got just bare dirt, your trees are not going to do well. They, they, they need some insulation from the sun. And the insulation isn't necessarily to, the, the mulch is, the ground cover is not necessarily to protect the tree. It is to protect the life in the soil, the insects in the soil uh, and in the mulch. So when, when you, I mean, technically, I guess, grass, the neighbor's grass is technically a form of ground cover. But I, I don't know if you can tell from that angle, but the grass that's closest to the perimeter of my yard, it's like so much greener than the grass that's towards the middle and away from the yard. And that's because my yard, it's got a lot of moisture, a lot of insect and organism activity, and it is significantly cooler, as well as there's a lot of built up nutrient that the grass is like trying to grab from my yard, even with the barrier. So when I, when I say ground cover, I mean, you, you technically could use anything, but I would avoid using like gravel or anything that's rock. I mean, I, I, I stopped by uh, Phoenix just last year and looking at many of the houses, I mean, they had like just gravel like in the lawn. It's just, it's like, to me, that's just contributing to the warming effect. I mean, <laughs> but you know what? It, it's, that's better than grass. It is absolutely useless. Um, looks good, I guess, but um, so if you come here, this is in addition to obviously mulch, wood chip, uh, anything organic, as in something that was living at one point and now is no longer. Leaves <clears throat> uh, is a great way to cover up the ground, as well as like small little stuff here. I mean, look at this. In addition to it covering up the ground, cooling the ground, providing uh, the organisms in, deep underneath the ground, a nice living uh, climate, it looks pretty cool, you've got to admit. I mean, these flowers thrive in my yard for some reason. Uh, <laughs> it, it originally just came from like one plant. But it, 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 it exploded. <clears throat> to me, it, it makes a pretty good contrast to what you see here. I mean, just the ground alone, okay? I mean, uh, I want to say these are called, there's several names. Uh, Purple Heart Flower, Moses in a Boat, Moses in a Cradle. Looks cool. And, and there's also a bunch of other stuff that I, I don't know. Unfortunately, I have no idea what these are called. But it looks cool. I got them, pop in the ground, and now they're growing like wild. I have no idea what these are called. This I know is edible. Um, it's very popular in Southeast Asian cuisine. It's growing here. Um, a lot of these, uh, especially this guy right here, um, I just chop and drop. Yeah, <laughs> another one. I mean, it looks cool, okay? Look at that. I, 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 unfortunately, I have no idea what these are called. If you have any idea what these are called, just add them to the comment. I'd be interested to see, to hear what these are uh, called. But um, I mean, I like them. It looks cool. And being that these are flowering plants, um, they also attract a bunch of insects, which in turn help to pollinate the tropicals. All right, so check it out. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Without the flowers from underneath me, 
and of course flowers on the tree none of these will be pollinated but here it is mangoes a lot of them granted a lot of these will fall there may be two or three in on the branch this is probably what this particular branch will be able to support is maybe a couple of fruits which i'm okay with <clears throat> yeah yeah these are they're they're just visually it, it, it looks cool and it's also again multi-purpose i mean it helps to break down my clay soil the roots of these ground covering plants are insane they they, they just thrive in anything including like my clay soil breaking it down loosening it up adding oxygen to it uh, therefore making it with tropicals the ice cream bean tree flowers everywhere there are a bunch of bee activities and insect activities on every single flower making it tropical fruit tree friendly so now <clears throat> this is also technically a ground cover uh, the the leftover log from um the uh, sunrise papaya uh, i in the beginning I, i've meant to chop it down into small pieces but you know what i'm i'm just gonna take the lazy approach leave it here let the insects uh and and worms do the thing in in breaking it down ground cover uh, it, it's it's not pretty but this is natural <clears throat> even here okay <laughs> There existed, <laughs> so a, a few months back, I, I put my pickling mango in here, but thanks to the generosity of a, a local viewer, um, he actually gave me a coconut cream mango. Uh, and you know, I, I just had to replace it. I mean, I, I dug out the uh, pickling mango, put it back in a container. Um, it's in recovery mode now and put this guy on the ground uh, and as you can see there were some stuff that's eating the new foliage but besides that it is doing phenomenally well yeah i mean i i, I just wanted the coconut <clears throat> cream mango in the ground uh this is one of the the rarer not, not rare it, this is one of the specialty mangoes that i've just been really excited about so change is not all that bad now going back to ground cover okay obviously uh mulch i mean when you look at all the branches i, I really don't throw any of this away all the chop and drop that i do came from just basically all the trees here <clears throat> look at this this is a great example yeah literally chop it toss it in the ground the insects will do the job at, at breaking it down, breaking the nutrient and releasing it back into the uh, ground to then be absorbed by the trees, the, the longins here, uh, <laughs> buzzing with activity because it's, it, it's very fragrant. They're attracting all these insects here, pollinating it. So <clears throat> my yard, <sighs> This is a front yard, okay. Imagine I'm a pedestrian. I'm I'm just walking around, walking around. Ooh, uh, a mango fruit <clears throat> hanging off of the tree, and ooh, longans hanging off the tree. To date, I, I have not had any problems with people picking any of my fruits. Surprisingly, uh, not yet. Anyway, I, I don't know how these mangoes would fare, but uh, I'll keep an eye on it. But where I'm going with that is, see these crowns of thorns? There is a reason why I've got them around the perimeter of my front yard. It serves as a living fence. And now, crown of thorns, okay, they do not lie. There literally is thorns everywhere so this is a great living uh fence it is i guess my 
passive way of protecting my fruits here from, I don't know, dogs and uh, pedestrians. <laughs> but um, it, 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 in addition to it looking cool, okay, uh, these guys flower year round, including winter. One of the few uh, yards in my neighborhood that's got like year round flower. And a fun tip, these crown of thorns propagate insanely easily. And there are some varieties that are like variegated. It, it just looks cool. Extremely low maintenance. <clears throat> and if you look at all the crown of thorns, okay, up and down here. In the very beginning, they all came from like two or three plants. All of these were propagated from those two or three plants. It is just so easy. Um, all you do really is break apart one of the branch, stick into the ground or into a, uh, a container, and out grows a brand new like structure. Yeah, it is. It, it's very easy to propagate. If you ever go to Southeast Asia, these guys are like everywhere. Um, it looks cool. Uh, and again, in my case, uh, it is a living fence. I mean, granted, uh, most of my trees, I, I'm training them to be uh, tall. So imagine the mangoes dangling from the top. I mean, you, you almost have to have a ladder in order to pick those, uh, either a ladder or maybe a, a pole to pick those. Uh, but that, that, that's my overall strategy in the front yard with, with the trees is, I, I mean, I, I'm not really concerned that folks will be picking on my fruit trees. I mean, like um, the sugar cane that you be here, I mean, at any given point, this tree produces hundreds and thousands of little fruits. I can't eat them all. So in that case, I actually do encourage my neighbors to just have at it, pick it up. Because uh, if not, it just gets uh, dropped to the ground and it gets then recycled uh, by the trees. So yeah, let, I mean, just, just from this angle, I don't know if you can tell, but it, it's, it's cool. It looks nice. Uh, and, and a lot of these are like... They don't take up a whole lot of water. Yeah, it, it just adds to the beauty. Uh, I mean, I, I have a strong feeling without any of these, the three trees here, ice cream bean, mango, mango, they're not going to do that well. But of course, with their buddies here, yeah, they're thriving. Same with everything that's on this side. Yeah, I mean, there's a big old piece of the <clears throat> uh, papaya that I took down uh, several months back. Look at that. Worms are having a field day eating them. And, and this is what you want. This is life being recycled uh, back into the ground to then be uptaken by the nearby mangoes, the nearby star fruit. Put this guy back. So let's, uh, let's take you to the back. Backyard. So this is actually the inspiration for this video. They, uh, they like to mess up my yard. It seems that's all they do. Scratch, 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 peck, peck, peck. Poop, scratch, scratch, scratch. But going to mulch really quick, going back to mulch really quick. So check it out, okay? This is how much mulch I got. Yeah. Ground level, look at that. I would say that's a good maybe six inches with the mulch. Probably more because I'm at the concrete patio here. But 
mulch is something you want to apply during the cold season, preferably right before winter hits, uh, because they will get broken down within a year. My backyard, at any given time, it's got at least this much mulch. And it used to be way higher, but it just keeps breaking down. I mean, that, that is how insanely quick the ground cover mulch gets broken down. And of course, if you come here, I mean, I, I guess the chickens already did this for me. <clears throat> but yeah, look at this. Okay. This is the result of uh, the broken down mulch. I mean, I mean, see how it's like consistently moist. It's not puddling in water. It's not wet. It is literally just moist. And I have a feeling these roots are probably from this jasmine. Uh, plant here might even be from the mango I don't know <laughs> but uh, hey you know what the chicken said this but see how my, my ground is nice and and uh, and full of life this is probably what chickens are looking for but the mulch this is just six months old mulch it's already broken down into basically soil but yeah, this is what you want your tropicals to live in, is all this moist soil uh, because of the broken down mulch. So yeah, just, uh, you're gonna, if able to aim for organic ground covers. Mulch, wood chip, even living ground cover like what you see here. Um, I want to say that plant is uh, something fish plant. I, I, yeah, it, it's also a Southeast Asian cuisine. But this section, I can't mulch anymore because of the, the uh, living ground cover. I mean, and I don't need to mulch anymore because of the living ground cover. And again, we, we do eat this. So it's not like it's just sitting there, uh, just looking pretty. <laughs> but beyond that, everywhere else, I mean, it is like just mulch, mulch and more mulch. There is one section of the yard that I don't have any mulch in. This right here, the chicken coop area. The reason for that is it's actually to accommodate them. Well, in the very beginning, it was a raised bed for vegetables, but we've since obviously the tropicals have taken over and now the chickens have taken it over. Uh, and what, what the chickens do is they actually just come and take dirt baths. They just dig it and then using the dirt from the ground here, it, it dries out any insects that might be on them. So that's basically their form of taking baths. So if you come back here, yeah, like look at this. Bamboo from the bamboo uh, stalks, all ground cover. And more importantly, ground cover slash food. Chopped up banana plant makes a great biomass, makes a great ground cover, also makes a great food for the insects and uh, organisms that like to munch on them. Uh, it is, yeah, overall just great. I mean, you, you really, I mean, my entire yard where there is tree, it, it, it's, it's basically all covered up with, with mulch uh, or ground cover. So, yeah, I mean, I, I know I have separate videos that talk about uh, wood, wood chip mulch in, in general, uh, but there really is just so much benefit to uh, ground cover. I mean, you, you really do want to protect that naked layer of dirt. I mean, you, this, is, this is probably the worst thing that you can do for your 
tropical fruit tree forest is to just not cover your your um, your ground. But again, I, I have a reason not to cover the section. But yeah, do not do not let your ground be like this. Cover it up if you can. Protect the roots of the tree. Protect the organisms. Protect your mycorrhizal fungus. Uh, and in turn, even the um, containers here, in turn, you will see the fruits of the fungus. Look at that. So yeah, I mean, occasionally I see a bunch of mushrooms popping out from my yard and that tells me that there's a lot of living, happy living organisms in my yard. So anyway, all right, have a good afternoon.